When you clean, you get into a routine and you kind of get used to doing the same thing each time, cleaning those same spaces the same way with the same stuff. And that's great. At least you're cleaning, or at least that's what I tell myself. But every now and then there are things that we forget that we do need to clean because if we don't, they start to look or smell or just become disgusting. So this week, I'm gonna show you seven of those things that you might be forgetting to clean that you probably should. And of course, I'll show you exactly how to clean them. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you should be cleaning instead of watching cleaning videos. So often when filming these videos, I have to take my own advice. I was standing in the shower this morning and looking up and it was sort of spraying water in all different directions and I'm under there like not having a good shower. And it reminded me that I need to descale my shower head. So if you haven't done this in a while, it's time for you to do it too. And it's really simple to do. Trust me, I'm telling myself the same thing. All you do is take a plastic zippered bag, fill it halfway with white vinegar. And if you have extra strength white vinegar, even better, and then affix it to your shower head and secure it with an elastic band. This might take a little bit of finagling depending on the kind of shower head that you have. Mine can be removed, so it's actually more convenient. I'm just gonna take it off and pop it into the bag of vinegar, but you figure it out. Either way, it's doable and it works. It's nice to have a bunch of plants around the house if you can keep them alive. I have killed four this year, but they need to be cleaned and a lot of us don't remember to clean them. The reason it's important to clean your real plants is because if there's a layer of dust on the leaf, it can't actually absorb sunlight, which means it's not going to photosynthesize the way it needs to. And if you have a fake plant, well, it's just gonna look dull. So there are a couple of ways that you can clean your plants, pretty easy and straightforward. The first thing to do is just to get a damp, Cloth. Here I'm using a general purpose microfiber cloth. It's dampened with room temperature water. Anything that's too cold can actually be bad for the plant. And then I'm just gently brushing the leaves one by one to remove the dust. Now this might sound like it takes a lot of work. It really doesn't. And it's not something that has to be done all the time. You just wanna help your plants live a good life. You also have to remember to water them note to self. Now the other thing that you can do if it's a smaller more detailed plant is you can use a cotton swab or a paintbrush actually and just gently brush off any dust in a downward motion. Now while you're doing this if you notice that there are any dead leaves feel free to pick those off and you can put those at the bottom where the soil is because that's actually going to help feed the plant. And finally if you have a fake plant or a plastic plant you can use any of the techniques that I talked about or if it's super durable, you can just run it under the sink. You guys might know that I have my own cleaning company, which I started in 2006. And when I started that company, I did all of the cleaning myself. So I learned a lot about life and toilets in particular. And because up to that point, I had only shared a bathroom with my sister, I had not yet learned about the value of cleaning the wall behind the toilet. Yes, men, I'm talking to you. When I was cleaning, I learned quickly that there were a lot of splashes and splatters that go on on that back wall and they need to be tended to because if they're not cleaned, they start to smell and become discolored. So all you need to do is spray that surface with, if you can get your hands on it, an enzyme cleaner, allow it to sit for five minutes. That's really gonna help break down that urine and then just wipe it clean. And on that note, another area of the toilet that we don't tend to focus on, although the rest of the toilet we usually do a great job on, is the toilet handle. You know, you're touching things and then you flush, so there's gonna be some bacteria transfer there. And you just wanna make sure that aside from cleaning the tank and the lid, the seat and the bowl, that you're cleaning the toilet handle as well. Chad and I cut cable about seven years ago but that doesn't mean we don't watch TV because we are obsessed with Netflix. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know all about this. So when Chad and I are hanging out either in our family room or in our room watching TV, one of us is usually cuddling a cat and the other one is usually cuddling the remote control. But the funny thing is your remote control gets a lot of germs on it. Think about it, a lot of people in the house are using the remote control right? You're touching your face, you're touching other things, then you're touching the remote. It never gets cleaned. And studies were done that show that over 50% of remote controls 
have the cold virus. Like they're not actually sick themselves, they just have the virus on them. So to quickly get rid of that, just mix up your own electronics cleaning solution with equal parts rubbing alcohol or plain white vodka if you can't find that and water, spray it onto an electronics cleaning microfiber cloth, give it a good wipe and let it dry. And if you have any gritty areas that are hard to get to between buttons, you can spray the product on a cotton swab and use that to clean as well. Speaking of points of contact, another thing that we forget to clean often are doorknobs. These are things that we're touching often, turning, opening, closing, lots of different family members and other people are using them and we don't know what germs they're bringing into our homes and of course we want to stay healthy and again I'm not a germaphobe I'm not telling you to be a germaphobe but if you want to keep your home healthy it's really important to disinfect these every now and then it's really nice to have a comfy plush rug or two in the bathroom so that way when you step out of the shower or you go to the toilet or you're brushing your teeth your feet are feeling good but those rugs collect stuff they're not good things odors, bacteria, splishes, splatters, hair, all that kind of stuff. And nobody wants a lot of that in the bathroom. So it's important to clean those rugs every now and then. To do so, first of all, check your fabric care label and make sure that they are actually machine washable. Hopefully they are. Now, if they are, you're gonna pop them into your machine on a cold, gentle cycle and add gentle detergent. And once that's done, you can either hang them to dry or you can place them in the dryer on the fluff or air dry cycle only. That way nothing's getting ruined, but they're gonna come out smelling fresh and looking great. If you have any exposed light bulbs at home, it's a good idea to give those a good dusting every now and then because over time they get dusty, which means they're not shedding the light that you would expect them to. And if they're hanging, like for example, in my dining room and you can prominently see the light bulb, it actually looks gross. So the important thing here is to make sure that your light fixture is turned off so that it's cool and it doesn't melt your cloth or burn your hand or pop the bulb. There are lots of things that could go wrong here, but it's very easy to avoid. Once your bulb is cooled, get yourself a flat weave microfiber cloth. Obviously I'm using mine, the Maker's Cleaning Cloth, and I'll put links to that down below. I'm not putting any product on it at all. I'm holding the bulb securely, and I'm just giving it a good wipe to get rid of any dust. The flat weave cloth means it's not going to get scratched, and this job takes literally four seconds per bulb. It's totally worth it. There you go, seven things that you might have forgotten to clean, but now you know how to do them. And anytime I do a video like this, guys, I am reminding myself too, because I hope you don't think I'm cleaning all these things all the time either. So when I make a video for you guys, I'm making it for me as well. I'd love to know in the comments down below, what are you guys watching on Netflix right now? I have admitted to you, Chad and I are a little bit obsessed. We've worked our way through several shows, but I'd love to know what you guys are loving on Netflix. Let me know. Here are two other videos I think you're going to love. And if you want to learn more about the cloths, you can click that button right over there. There's a button down there that lets me know you care. So click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.